This is the moment a piece of California literally fell into the sea. In the early weeks of 2026, the world watched as surveillance and drone footage captured an entire coastal bluff collapsing instantly, taking with it decades of geological history and threatening the very infrastructure that defines the Golden State. Another piece of footage, captured near the Pacifica and Daly City border, shows not a slow trickle of dirt, but a catastrophic sheer failure where thousands of tons of rock and soil detach in a matter of seconds. But this was not an isolated anomaly. It was a symptom of a systemic geological failure, from the iconic curves of Big Sur to the luxury estates of the Palos Verdes Peninsula. The ground beneath our feet is moving, and it is moving faster than almost anyone predicted. Experts from the United States Geological Survey and the Scripps Institution of Oceanography are now asking, how did this happen so fast? And more importantly, where will the next collapse occur? To understand the scale of what we are seeing, we have to look at the data. California is home to one of the most geologically active coastlines on the planet. According to recent reports from the California Geological Survey, the state is currently grappling with a convergence of three lethal factors, record-breaking hydrological saturation from back-to-back -back atmospheric river cycles, accelerating sea level rise, which has now surpassed previous decadal projections, and the reactivation of ancient dormant landslide complexes that were previously thought to be stable. Take the Rancho Palos Verdes area, south of Los Angeles. This region has become ground zero for modern coastal geology and serves as a terrifying case study for what happens when urbanization meets unstable geology. In late 2025 and moving into January 2026, the city reported that land movement in the Portuguese Bend landslide complex had accelerated to a staggering 80 to 88 times its historical average. At its peak, ground that used to move inches per year was shifting up to 13 inches per week. This is not just a slow creep, it is a full-scale geological emergency. Recent test borehole drilling has revealed a terrifying discovery. A deeper slide plane, approximately 350 feet below the surface, is moving much faster than the shallower surface layers. This basal slip surface essentially turns the entire hillside into a conveyor belt sliding toward the sea. It begins with water, but it ends with chemistry. When California experiences intense winter storms, rainwater doesn't just run off, it infiltrates deep into the earth. In areas like Palos Verdes, this water reaches a specific geological culprit, the Altamira Shale, part of the Monterey Formation. Within this shale lies a layer of bentonite clay. Bentonite is formed from ancient volcanic ash deposited millions of years ago during the Miocene Epoch. It has a unique property. It is thixotropic. When dry, it is hard as rock. But when it absorbs water, it expands and becomes incredibly slick, losing its sheer strength. It acts effectively like a layer of industrial grease, allowing massive slabs of the earth weighing millions of tons to slide toward the ocean under their own weight. In Palos Verdes, the situation is exacerbated by the geometry of the rock layers. The rock beds here dip toward the ocean, a condition geologists call a dip slope. This means the layers of rock are tilted like a ramp leading directly into the sea. When the bentonite clay layers between these rock beds get wet, gravity simply pulls the top layers down the ramp. This is why the land movement is so persistent and difficult to stop. The crisis in Palos Verdes has escalated beyond cracked pavement. In 2024, the movement became so severe that utility companies were forced to cut off natural gas and electricity to hundreds of homes. The shifting earth was shearing underground pipes and snapping power lines, creating an imminent risk of explosion and wildfire. This is the new reality of coastal living. It is not just about losing land, it is about losing the basic services that make modern life possible. This movement is often compounded by a phenomenon known as soil liquefaction or hydro consolidation. While typically associated with earthquakes, high pore water pressure from extreme saturation can cause solid ground to lose its structural integrity. To understand this, imagine the soil as a collection of solid particles touching each other. The friction between these particles holds the ground up. When water fills the spaces or pores between the particles, it exerts pressure. If that pressure gets high enough, it pushes the particles apart. The friction drops to zero and the solid ground behaves like a liquid. When this happens at the base of a sea cliff, the result is not a slow slide, but an instant, catastrophic shear failure. The cliff face simply detaches. 
This was the primary driver behind the massive failures seen in Northern California. The heavy rainfall from the relentless atmospheric rivers of late 2025 raised the groundwater table to historic levels. This groundwater didn't just wet the soil, it pressurized it from the inside out, blowing out the faces of cliffs that had stood stable for decades. Three point law one var big sur. The impact on infrastructure is devastating and astronomically expensive. Caltrans recently announced that portions of Highway 1 near Big Sur, specifically at the massive Regent Slide, may not fully reopen until late March 2026. This slide, which began in early 2024, is a textbook example of a top-down failure. Crews have been forced to remove over 300,000 cubic yards of debris. To put that in perspective, that is enough material to fill nearly 100 Olympic-sized swimming pools. But the Regent Slide is just one of many. The Paul Slide and the Danny Creek failure share similar characteristics. In Big Sur, the steep terrain means that road engineers cannot simply build a retaining wall at the bottom. The forces are too great. Instead, they must reshape the mountain itself. This involves using spider excavators, specialized machines with articulating legs that can climb near vertical slopes to crawl up the slide and scrape it down layer by layer. It is dangerous, slow, and incredibly expensive work. The geology here is characterized by highly fractured metamorphic rock that crumbles like sugar when saturated. The highway was carved into these cliffs in the 1930s, an engineering marvel of its time, but one that is increasingly difficult to maintain in the face of modern climate realities. As the frequency of intense storms increases, the windows of time available for repairs are shrinking, leading to prolonged closures that devastate the local tourism economy. Tap the like button to let us know this content is making a difference. And if you're watching on your phone, be sure to press the hype button right below. But the threat extends beyond roads. The Lawson Rail Corridor, the second busiest intercity rail line in the United States, connecting San Diego, Los Angeles and San Luis Obispo, is facing an existential crisis. In San Clemente, the tracks sit on eroding bluffs that are retreating at an alarming rate. This stretch of coastline is unique because it features ancient landslides that have been reactivated. The Mariposa Point landslide, for example, has caused repeated service interruptions. The San Diego Association of Governments, or SANDAG, has already poured over $300 million into stabilization efforts. These efforts include drilling concrete soldier piles, massive steel beams encased in concrete, deep into the bedrock, to pin the sliding earth in place. They have also installed tiebacks, which are steel cables drilled horizontally into the bluff, and tension to hold the face together. However, these are temporary patches. The cliffs in San Clemente are composed of the Capistrano Formation, a weakly cemented siltstone and sandstone that erodes easily. When waves undercut the toe of the bluff, the upper sections lose support and fail. The long-term reality is a project estimated at over $4 billion to bore a tunnel inland, moving the train off the coast entirely. As of 2026, the managed retreat of this rail line is no longer a debate, it is a race against gravity. Vai point kudimot nuduk bin dang kalva shoimon. The question of how this happened is answered by a combination of human activity and natural force. As sea levels rise, the toe or the base of these cliffs is hit with more frequent and more powerful wave action. This undercutting removes the foundation, leaving the top heavy cliffs vulnerable to gravity. Research from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography utilizing light detection and ranging technology, has quantified this loss. LiDAR allows scientists to create precise 3D maps of the coastline and compare them over time. The data shows that cliff erosion is not a steady, linear process, it is episodic. A cliff might remain stable for 10 years, and then lose 10 feet in a single storm. This episodic nature makes prediction incredibly difficult. However, the trend line is clear. As the Pacific Ocean warms, it expands, raising sea levels. Additionally, melting land ice contributes to the volume. Higher sea levels allow waves to attack the cliffs higher up the face and with more energy, accelerating the rate of undercut. Furthermore, the loss of protective beaches is a critical factor. Sand acts as a buffer, absorbing wave energy before it hits the cliffs. But damming of rivers inland has reduced the amount of sediment flowing to the coast, starving the beaches of sand. Without this natural armor, the cliffs are fully exposed to the pounding of the Pacific. We cannot ignore the human element. Urbanization along the coast has fundamentally altered the hydrology of the cliffs. In a natural state, 
much of the rainfall would run off the surface or be absorbed by native vegetation. But when we cover the land with asphalt, concrete and homes, we concentrate the runoff into storm drains that often dump water directly onto the cliff faces. Even more damaging is landscape irrigation. The lush green lawns and tropical gardens of coastal estates require massive amounts of water. This water doesn't just disappear, it percolates down into the soil, artificially raising the groundwater table. In places like Palos Verdes and Laguna Beach, geologists estimate that landscape irrigation contributes significantly to the destabilization of the slopes. We are essentially lubricating the slides that threaten our own homes. But for those living along the coast, the concern is personal. People want to know, is my home safe? Experts point to specific warning signs that every coastal resident should monitor. First, look for new or expanding cracks in foundations, driveways or patio slabs. Pay close attention to cracks that run parallel to the coastline as these are often tension cracks indicating that the ground is pulling away toward the slope. Second, check for doors or windows that suddenly stick or no longer close properly. This indicates the frame of the house is racking or twisting as the foundation shifts beneath it. Third, observe the landscape. Leaning trees, utility poles, or fences are classic signs of soil creep. Geologists call this a drunken forest. If the trees are tilting downhill, the soil is moving. Fourth, watch for water seeping from the ground in new or unusual locations. This phenomenon, known as daylighting, means the water table is fully saturated and is forcing its way to the surface. Fifth, listen to your house and the land. Audible popping or snapping sounds can indicate tree roots snapping underground or timber framing fracturing under stress. Finally, look for fissures or stairs forming in the soil of your yard. If your backyard looks like it is developing steps that you didn't build, the land is slumping. The geological crisis has triggered an economic one. The California insurance crisis of 2024 and 2025 has solidified into a new normal. Major insurers have ceased writing new policies in high-risk coastal zones, citing the unpredictability and severity of the risks. Homeowners are increasingly forced onto the FAIR plan, the state's insurer of last resort. In high-risk fire and slide zones, FAIR plan policies have more than doubled in volume. These policies are often expensive and provide limited coverage, leaving many homeowners underinsured. This has led to a cooling of the real estate market in some coastal areas. Properties that were once highly coveted are now sitting on the market longer, as buyers become wary of the geological and financial risks. In some extreme cases, such as in parts of Palos Verdes, properties have lost significant value as they are deemed effectively uninsurable and uninhabitable. The USGS highlights that approximately 40% of California's beaches are eroding in the long term, but that number jumps to 66% when looking at short-term trends. We are witnessing a shift from periodic erosion to a state of chronic coastal retreat. In Santa Cruz, along West Cliff Drive, another chunk of the coastal bluff fell into the bay just this week. While the pedestrian path remains open for now, city officials have been forced to install water-filled barriers and are considering a strategy known as managed retreat. Managed retreat is a controversial but necessary shift in policy. It involves the difficult process of literally moving roads, utilities and homes inland because the battle against the Pacific is one we can no longer win. In Santa Cruz, plans are already in motion to realign a 400-foot stretch of road near Lighthouse Field State Beach, moving it 50 feet inland. This strategy acknowledges that traditional hard armoring techniques, like seawalls and riprap, have consequences. While they may protect the property immediately behind them, they often accelerate erosion on adjacent beaches by reflecting wave energy. They also prevent the natural erosion that supplies sand to the beaches, eventually leading to the disappearance of the beach itself. The California Coastal Commission has become increasingly strict about approving new seawalls, favoring softer solutions or retreat whenever possible. We are entering a new era of coastal management. Organizations like the California Ocean Protection Council are now using advanced technology to monitor the threat. Satellite interferometry, or INSAR, uses radar images from space to measure ground deformation down to the millimeter. This technology allows scientists to see the pre-collapse deformation that is invisible to the naked eye. By comparing radar images taken over time, they can generate heat maps showing exactly where the ground is inflating or deflating. In Palos Verdes and other critical zones, this data is combined with ground-based GPS sensors and tilt meters. 
These instruments provide real-time data on Earth movement. In some locations, acoustic sensors are used to listen to the soil. As the grains of dirt slide past each other, they generate high-frequency noise that can indicate an acceleration of movement before it becomes visible on the surface. Dewatering is another engineering solution being deployed. In the Portuguese Bend area, the city has installed hydrogas, which are horizontal gravity drains drilled into the hillside. These pipes act like straws, sucking groundwater out of the slide plane and draining it away to the ocean. By reducing the water pressure within the landslide, engineers hope to increase friction and slow the movement. However, in the face of record-breaking rainfall, even these measures can be overwhelmed. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the bell, share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for being with us on this great journey. Leave your thoughts in the comments and like to help us. Remember to subscribe for more. See you soon.